Hi! I wanted to take a little bit of time right now to talk to you about something that's really important to me and that is how are you talking to yourself? How are you talking to yourself? What words are you using? What phrases? What belief are you using? And what effect is that having on you? And the main reason I wanted to do this today is I'm listening to a new Audible at the moment, Daring Greatly by Brianne Brown. It's absolutely amazing. I'd highly recommend it. A lot about courage and bravery and how actually you can't be courageous and brave without being vulnerable and afraid. Because if you do something that you're not scared of, it doesn't take any bravery. It doesn't take courage, does it? It doesn't take courage to just make a drink or go to Tesco or whatever if you're not scared of those things. Anyway, in the book, she had quoted from a lady called Lynn Twist and Lynn Twist's book, The Soul of Money. And she was talking about how we talk to ourselves, the words and the phrases we use, and the effect that has on us. And also timings, the timings of those words. And one of the things that Lynn Twist had said was about the word enough, being enough and not being enough. And she said, one of the worst things that we do is when we wake up in the morning and we haven't had the amount of sleep that we feel like we needed the very first thing we think to ourselves is I haven't had enough sleep before you open your eyes before you're fully awake before you get out of bed before you do anything about your day you're telling yourself I am not enough I have failed before you've even done anything and here's the thing as you are drifting off to sleep, your conscious brain moves to one side and your subconscious brain takes over. And it's your subconscious brain that is dealing with everything while you're asleep, getting itself sorted, getting your thoughts, getting your feelings sorted. And your subconscious brain believes everything is fact. To it, everything is a fact. So as you're falling to sleep at night, your subconscious brain, it's, it's almost in a hypnotic state when it's in control and your subconscious brain is believing your thoughts and if your thoughts are I didn't get enough done today um, I've not achieved what I needed to achieve oh my god I'm frantic I failed tomorrow I'm going to try and do it again tomorrow I'm going to make sure I set my alarm at six and I do a b c d e and then you toss and turn during the night you need the toilet your cat's awake your dog's awake your child's awake your partner's awake your neighbors are awake whoever and you don't get enough sleep so when that alarm goes off at six you reach over you touch it you're tired and you think I haven't had enough sleep I haven't had enough sleep, I can't do it. That's your first thought. And that goes boom, straight into your subconscious brain, boom, straight into what you believe. And the first thing you've done, you've not even opened your eyes, you're not even fully awake, and you have said, I am not enough, I can't. And you're going to believe that for the rest of your day. You're going to believe that for the rest of your day. And it's so, so important, the things you say to yourself in the morning and before you go to sleep to that subconscious brain. One of the books that I read, probably coming up to about a year ago, actually, was Miracle Morning. And it is so, it's made a massive difference to me. I know that my team, we all get together um, with Izzy every single morning. We do Miracle Morning together. We do one at seven, we do one at eight. There's a lot of other teams that do the same thing. And it's massively important it makes a difference. Now one of the things that Hal is talking about in there, I will put a link below to all of the books so you can look them up so don't worry of going, oh my god, what did you just say? He's talking about reprogramming your morning to reprogram your day to reprogram your life basically and it makes such a big difference. It makes a massive difference and using affirmations during this morning, so you're not saying, I'm not enough, I can't, I haven't, I won't, it's done. Start your morning with those positive affirmations and program yourself positively. The second I wake up, I program myself. The first, my first prevailing thought is always, thank goodness for Neil. And I reach over and he's there and I just say, I'm, just, I'm grateful for you, I'm grateful for you, I love you. My first thought is always of gratitude and love. And then I'm, I'm thankful, I've got a warm bed, a safe home, curtains, a roof, a carpet, fluffy, fluffy slippers that I'm about to put my feet into, cold clean water from my tap. All these things, literally, legs that can walk, legs that can walk means the bathroom, fingers that can turn a tap, a mouth that can drink, lungs that can breathe. All these things are things to be grateful for and I start my day off with that gratitude. And those affirmations said over and over again, they make a difference. Now. I'll be in like this. 
because you cannot argue with Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali said, it's the repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. Once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to change. Things begin to change. And that's true. And it's not just your thought process that changes. Once you start understanding the power, the power of your thoughts on yourself, on your mind, on your surroundings, on your life, on your universe, on the universe, of what you're made up of, of the quantum relationship, of the biological relationship between you and the universe and the surrounding energy. It's not just think happy thoughts, think of butterflies, think of uh, rainbows and everything's okay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying change your thoughts, they change your life. Stop thinking badly about yourself, right? I'll give you an example. I've lived here now for about 18 months and I cook nearly every night because I love to cook. I'm good at cooking, I'm not gonna lie, I am. And I love to cook. And being vegan, it's not always easy to grab things. Anyway, in that 18 months, I bet I must have made hundreds and hundreds of meals here. But do you know what I remember the most? The lemon spaghetti. Oh, I made one of those one pot spaghettis and I put too much lemon juice in it and it was foul. It was, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was like drinking a bowl of spaghetti made with that jiff lemon juice. I don't think of the bao buns made from scratch or the vegan sushi buffet that I made or the, the Chinese spreads or the Mexican extravaganza that took me two days and was phenomenal. I don't think of those things. I think of the thing I did wrong. And failure is great, you learn from it, but then they go, from now on, I always measure my lemon juice, but why am I still thinking about it? I need to reprogram it. One of the best books for understanding that is this book. Now, this book goes into a lot about physics and biology and anatomy and explains your relationship with the universe around you and how we are energy. We know we're all energy. I am atoms. I'm made of the same atoms as this chair, as this curtain, as this pen. We are atoms and we all give off an energy and a frequency. One of the most important things that I have listened to in The Law of Attraction, listened to in Gabby Bernstein's books, read about in Gabby Bernstein's books, are the power of your affirmations, the power of your gratitude, the power of your positivity in changing not just your thoughts, but in changing you. We're all going to have grumpy thoughts. We're all going to have these moments. One of the worst moments for me is when I'm driving and someone pulls out in front of me. Or they don't use an indicator. Or they decide they're turning. Or I'm driving 70 miles an hour down the motorway and they want to be in my lane. And you're like, whoa, whoa. And it makes you really mad. It makes you really mad because you possibly just nearly died. 100%. But every time that action happens, your reaction is the same. You are trained. You have trained your brain to react to that stimuli in that way. Untrain it. Every time you experience the same um, action, but you change your reaction, every single time you're changing the wiring to that moment, and in the future, your reaction to it will be different. Now when people pull out in front of me, I'm like, whoa, fella, you just nearly killed us both. Now go with love. Go away, go with love, go with safety. Don't do that in front of somebody else. If you do that again, somebody else might not break in time. Be safe, go with love. And I send them love, genuine love, from me to them, in the hope that they don't pull out in front of the wrong person that can't stop. And it changes my reaction to that moment. Now, he does say in here, I want to just read this to you, because it's really important, and I'm running out of time. When you use the tools of redirecting, that's changing your reaction to that moment, you prevent yourself from behaving unconsciously. You stop yourself from activating your old programs. You biologically change, causing unfiring and unwiring of nerve cells. Similarly, you stop the same genes from being signaled in the same ways. You physiologically change yourself. You anatomically change yourself, your neurons, the way they're wired, the way your brain is working, the way your, the way your thoughts are working, is physically changing you for the better, for the more patient, for the more wise, leading from love and leading from joy.
This book. Really not where you thought I was going to go then, is it? The hidden messages of water changed everything for me with regard to not just my thought patterns, but it started me on this whole journey of self-development and improving my mind, improving my soul, improving my thoughts, and therefore improving my relationships with other people and improving my life. He did an experiment, Masudu Imoto. I'm sorry, that was probably not the greatest accent. He took water, all from the same place, so it was all, you know, done very, very properly, the experiment. And he wanted to photograph the crystallisation of the water molecules. And he exposed them to good words, bad words, no words. And he photographed the effect it had on those molecules. Okay. But look at that beautiful crystallisation. Lovely. Blurred. Not even developed. This one was ignored. No words were said to it. The words said to these water molecules, the words said with passion, directly, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, changed the development of the water molecule. You, as a physical person, are 60% water. Water is hydrogen and oxygen, okay? Hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen vibrates. Hydrogen molecules in our body wobble and spin. They point to false magnetic north underneath a resonance scanner. They move, okay? Because you move. So the way that you are dealing, the way that you are dealing with your thoughts, what you are putting out, your thoughts are changing your water molecules and your body is made up of water, 60% water, 40% of your body is hydrogen and your thoughts are affecting the way the hydrogen moves. Rumi said, you are the universe in ecstatic motion because you are, you are water, you are hydrogen, you are wibbling and wobbling, your thoughts are affecting your body, affecting your environment, affecting the universe, you are the universe in ecstatic motion. You deserve more than negative thoughts. You deserve more than disbelief. You deserve more. You deserve gratitude and belief and love and positivity. And it all starts with you. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. Believe in yourself because I, absolutely believe in you and I'll tell you a secret as well. I believe in me too.